Bridget, would you uh, travel on the tube at the moment? I think this comes down to the need for government to provide clear guidance to all of us. It isn't just about individual choices. And what we saw on Sunday with the Prime Minister's statement and what followed was an unfortunate pattern of confusion that I think has left a lot of people wondering what the right thing is to do. It is quite reasonable that all workers should expect a safe working environment. And that has to be done carefully, it has to be done properly, it has to be worked through with those affected, with trade unions too. And I don't think giving people such little notice that they could return to work has helped in that way. There's also, of course, the big issue that lots of workers face real problems around what that will mean for childcare while school, schools remain closed in large part other than to key workers, children and vulnerable children. The government's response to that is to expect employers uh, to just negotiate that on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, of course, the vast majority of businesses and employers will want to do the right thing and they're responsible, but I don't think such big decisions that have an effect on all of us can be left so unclear I think we needed clearer direction from government and this confusion I think is so really costly. Specifically on transport, do you think it's too early then to be opening up uh, to, you know, the economy for more workers to be going on public transport at the moment? Do you think that's too soon? We recognise that there needs to be a phased move to greater economic activity once again. Do you think again. it's too soon now? Well, I think it is unfortunate that the Prime Minister made a statement on Sunday with no guidance to back that up, without a clearly thought through plan about how that could be achieved. I mean, we've heard this evening from Mick that if the government was to work more closely with trade unions, with businesses, and to try and find a more sensible way of doing things, I think that would leave people feeling safer. Because it's not so just it is too soon then at the moment? No. What we want to see is it to be done in a careful and gradual right. way. So yes, where people can avoid public okay. transport, they should do so. Steve is right to say that, but it shouldn't rest on individuals simply making that decision. We do have personal judgment and discretion, yes, but the absence of clear direction from government is damaging. Uh, Luke, your, your big sigh just came from you. Is it? Oh. <laughs> well, uh... I think one of the unfortunate things that... Just the start of what will be a really challenging process. You know, the government are moving towards uh, looking at a phased return for some children to school. Again, getting the communication on that right will be absolutely crucial, but it will also involve parents feeling confident in sending their children back to school. It, we will need to make sure that school staff, all school staff, are confident they have a safe working environment. Because if we don't get that right, um, it will mean that children don't return. Uh, it will mean that lots of people feel extremely anxious and worried about what the future will hold. Of course, the reason for some of this worry is quite legitimate in that our testing rates are still far too low. The government has consistently failed to meet its targets around testing. Testing is, of course, not a strategy in and of itself. It is a means to achieving an outcome. But if we're going to move through this process, if we're going to trust the British people to exercise more judgment, then we must have clear messages from government around what that involves and what that looks like, and also a move to a much stronger position on testing so that we can all feel confident that what's being asked of us by government is being informed not just by the best medical advice and scientific advice, but that we can, can be safe when we go to work, when we go uh, you know, around our business. And can I be clear, in terms of Labour's position, are you supporting the Conservative government's position in England, which is to ease a lockdown as it is at the moment, or is Labour more supportive of the Labour government's position in Wales, which is obviously to keep the lockdown in place? Throughout this process, we've said that we'll work constructively with the government. We want the government to succeed because it will, it's vital for the country at a time of national crisis that we have that constructive relationship. So, so, we've so also what, said, the Welsh are wrong? No, it's not. No, certain areas are devolved. Of course, it would have been better uh, if all four parts of the United Kingdom had been able to move in lockstep. And it's disappointing that the Prime Minister wasn't able to secure that consent. But what we will need to see is much greater testing so that we can be confident that all of these measures no, don't I see hear an increase you, I, I hear you in, made that point in very clear. Just, just to be clear of your position, you support the easing at the moment. I know you're unhappy with the messaging and, 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 and the lack of communication with the unions, but do you think the right decision has been taken by the government this week to begin to lift the restrictions? There was always going to come a point where restrictions were eased. What I think is unnecessary is but putting is it, arbitrary is it right dates. This week? Well, I think it's unnecessary to put arbitrary dates on that and to rush it when you don't have the proper guidance in place. We've seen the impact that has had on public transport. We've put an arbitrary date on the phased return of school reopening for some children. 
it's better to get it right I'm still not than clear to rush it. This is the right week. I'm sorry, maybe I'm being. Well, it, it, it's not. The government are the, the people that are relying upon the evidence to determine whether it's the right, exactly the right point. It is not for us to provide an alternative narrative around that. What we will do is back up the government where they're getting, they're getting it right and be critical and offer alternatives where we feel that they aren't. So on testing, on the lack of PPE, on the big problems we face in social care, on the fact that a lot okay, of school no, staff are worried about what's you. coming. The government has to take the public with us. I agree with Steve, it involves treating people like adults. But if we're to do that, there has to be openness and there has to be transparency. Can I just clarify, because it's not that we've put arbitrary... The level of deaths is tragically high and behind that number is a family devastated by grief. Um, we supported the government going into lockdown. It was the right thing to do. Uh, we've also supported the government and have called for many of the measures that they've brought forward to provide support to workers and businesses to try and get through this crisis. In some cases, we think there needs to be extra clarity, further changes that are needed in order for us to... Sorry. Uh, oh, in... Classic. A phone's gone off. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, Mick, sort it out. But in terms of the question, is, is the pill worse than the ill? I don't accept that it's a choice between uh, saving lives, public health and the economy. Um, the lockdown was necessary to save lives. We have unfortunately seen we have amongst the highest uh, death rates in Europe. That is deeply regrettable and has caused grief and heartache for so many families. That's why it's so important that what comes next is right, both in terms of testing, also in social care where we know that testing isn't where it should be, that far too many social care workers are not getting access to testing. PPE unfortunately still remains a problem, but there is a lot of anxiety around what will come next for the economy. That's why we support the government in taking the steps that they have to protect jobs and living standards and businesses. But there will now need to be conversation around what happens next. So yes, job retention, but also job creation and a plan to get the economy moving once more. There's uh, another message has come in from David Colby. Why wasn't strategy built around the mortality?